the time has finally come. Though it brings main Fräulein no joy to do so, there is something she must announce to the assembled populace. My loyal servants, one must bid you adieu till such time as I beckon you once more. Though we have faced many trials and tribulations together, you have all shown commendable courage in the course of duty. I feel a breeze now blows upon this place. And I feel that it blows in your honor. What? You're just gonna bail on us? With the arrival of this giant meteorite, many more people have succumbed to the slumber. Strong as the soldiers may be, they are struggling to cope. And there is demand for volunteers everywhere we turn. Main Fräulein and I shall tend to the victims on the soldiers' behalf. The rest of this investigation we place in your capable hands. Goodbye. You are a good listener. I enjoy chatting with you. To be honest, most of the other adventurers in the guild only ever talk to me when they want to hear Oz's reconnaissance reports. This little journey we had? It was a great adventure. I'm just sorry that it has to end so abruptly. Huh? You're talking a little weirder than you normally do. Oh. Yikes! What am I doing? I totally broke form! What main Fräulein means to say is... is... is that the mystical mysteries that vex and perplex are bound to be effortlessly extinguished by the advent of your commendable courage and wondrous wisdom. Uh, and now Oz's translation is the one that sounds all kooky. <clears throat> Main Fräulein simply wishes to say that she has every confidence that you will arrive at the truth of this matter. Ahem. Most indeed. <laughs> My dear attendants, I hereby charge the Ritter Dürfe Ertelung with leading you out from the darkness, back into the realm of light. Who are you calling your attendant? We will meet again. Once this matter is concluded, I propose that we all get a drink together. <sighs> well, now we're two people short. But, let's not get hung up about that. The good news is, I found something else out. I shaved some dust off the meteorite and used it to do another reading. It was actually really effective. These rocks have been around for hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. Leonard must have lived a very long time ago. The meteorites carry his will and can pass it on to others. In other words, centuries on from Leonard's life and the strength of his will is not diminished one bit. A guy from the distant past with a burning ambition to scale the highest mountain. I'd be willing to bet that he was an adventurer. Just like you. An adventurer? That does explain his obsession with mountain climbing. Our approach so far has been too passive, and time has been against us every step of the way. We need to change our strategy, and we need to attack this problem at its source. Paimon agrees. From now on, we need to put Leonard at the center of everything we do. Yes. Because if the meteorites carry Leonard's will with them, then it's precisely as Fischl said. The rocks are, in a sense, a curse. I'm a little incredulous, but it turns out her blind guess was actually spot on. No, I'm a respectable astrologist, and I shouldn't stoop to that kind of criticism. Anyway... All we need to do now is remove the curse. Okie dokie. Since we've got a historical adventurer on our hands, Paimon thinks we should pay a visit to the Adventurer's Guild.
records show that there have been many adventurers by that name over the years. It is impossible to know which one you refer to. However, I do recall that there is a book in the library authored by someone called Leonard. Perhaps you should take a look? Leonard's book should be in the northwest corner on the top floor of the library. Northwest corner... Should be right over there. A Guide for Adventurers, written by Leonard. But the words have faded, and there are even pages missing. Paimon's got no hope of reading this. time on this one. Oh, right! Yeah, Mona! She might have a better idea. Let me see. <laughs> I could have predicted as much. Your average astrologist would definitely give up at this point. But I am Mona, progenitor of the future of astrology. Nothing can stand in my way. I simply need to deduce the missing portions with my astrolabe, write them in, and then decipher the text. <sighs> Finished at last. So what does it say? Just as I thought. Leonard was an adventurer who lived 2,000 years ago. His lifelong dream was to reach the summit of a mountain called Pylos Peak. 2,000 years? So the constellation that caused the meteorites is from 2,000 years ago? Somehow, for some reason, this constellation was summoned down from the sky. I suspect that the Fatui have something to do with that part. Paimon thinks so too. Whenever something shady happens, you can bet the Fatui are involved. The meteorites harbor elemental energy, which radiates out and lulls people to sleep by some means akin to hypnosis. And if I'm guessing correctly, there should be some sort of core meteorite among the bunch, within which 
is a crystal that harbors Leonard's spirit. Well, if I were Leonard, I would want to make sure the core lands right on the snowy summit that I never made it to while I was alive. So, the core should be at the top of Pylos Peak? Where is that? Pylos? It's the first I'd heard of it, too. So, I compared the map from the book against the current topography of Mondstadt. Apparently, Pylos Peak no longer exists. Are you trying to say that the tallest mountain Paimon's- I once read somewhere that the Animo Archon, Barbados, once used his divine power to mobilize the winds and blow the ice and snow from the face of the earth. The whole landscape of Mondstadt was changed in the process. The mountains of that age were replaced by the vast stretch of ocean we see today. Still, a mountain that high? Drop it into the ocean and it'll still leave a trace. The summit still reaches just above the water's surface. So the place known as Pylos Peak in Leonard's day is today known as Musk Reef. Yeah. 